Homosexual relationship is still illegal in over 70 countries and in 12 countries it's still punishable by death. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is of course me, Xander, and today I want to talk to you about whether or not you should be visiting countries where it is illegal or criminalized to be on the LGBTQ spectrum. Now, as most of my subscribers know by this point, I have been traveling Asia for the last four months and anyone who's traveled or is planning to travel Asia should be aware that at some point you're going to have to pass through either Singapore or Malaysia where the big main transportation airport hubs are. Now in the last four months I've avoided Singapore and Malaysia purely based on the fact that both those countries they have laws written down where it is illegal to be gay and I personally didn't want to visit those countries based on that fact alone. I didn't even want to set foot in the airport and spend money in a country supporting an economy that doesn't support me. However, to head to my next destination in Krabi, Thailand, the best and easiest way to get there is via Singapore airport. In Asia alone, there's several countries that criminalize LGBT activity. Sri Lanka, Singapore, Maldives, Malaysia, Myanmar, the list goes on. Right now here in Indonesia, there's actually two provinces where it's illegal and they enforce Sharia law. Although the country on the whole does not criminalize LGBT activity and Bali itself is a very liberal place. Now the first thing that I I want to talk about is whether or not you're in danger visiting these countries where it is illegal to be gay. In places like Singapore where I'm heading to next specifically, no, not at all. There is a vibrant gay community and there is gay clubs, gay bars, lots of gay stuff happening all around. It just so happens that written down in their laws you can't be gay and there is no anti-discrimination protection, no adoption, no marriage, things like that. And politically there is progress being made towards the decriminalization of homosexual activity, which is nice. In other countries, so such as Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur for example it's likely to be very liberal again they have gay parties and gay clubs and stuff like that the government there have insisted that if you're entering the country solely for the purpose of going to these gay parties they don't want to let you in so it's not the friendliest and especially when you go out of the big cities into the more rural areas it will get considerably more conservative in most countries in Asia whether or not it's illegal or legal to be gay I would have my wits about me when being open about my sexuality in public. I'm not the sort of guy to kiss or hold hands in public or in the street anyway, just because I feel uncomfortable most of the time. Even in the UK I still hold back because yes, whilst we have gay marriage and legal protections and a fairly liberal society, there's no guarantee that there's not one asshole walking down the street who's not going to kick your face in just because they feel like it. So the law whether or not it's on your side doesn't necessarily mean that the attitude of the general public reflects the law. Okay, so you may not be in danger of being arrested or abused while you're out there and being gay, but I want to talk about whether or not morally should you support an economy that doesn't support your sexuality, doesn't support who you are. Now, whilst I've held this moral stance of I don't want to visit a country and spend money in an economy that doesn't support me. Recently I've started to think about the flip side to this argument. In every country that you go to, which may or may not be illegal to be gay, there are gay people. There are gay people in every single country in the world. Those people won't always have the luxury of just going out to a different country where it is okay to be gay or choosing whether or not they can surround themselves with people who don't have a problem with who they are. For those people it's going to be extremely isolating to be surrounded by only people who have an anti-LGBT attitude. The people living in those countries have been brought and raised in a way of life that doesn't accept them for who they are. They might not be able to come out to their families, they might not have ever met another gay person, they might not have ever met someone who comes from a country where it is okay to be gay. In a lot of countries where being gay is not strictly legal, there are still a lot of gay bars, gay clubs, and those places will still need your business to be able to thrive. So not only can you come here to support the local LGBT people, you can come and support the local LGBT businesses. And those same people will be the people whose attitudes are not reflected by the government which makes these laws in the first place. I feel very lucky and very privileged to have been brought and raised in a society that for the most part does accept who I am and I don't have too much trouble, especially in comparison to a lot of the countries in the world that still criminalize and death penalty for being gay. But how can I make a change in any of these countries if I'm not prepared to visit them. Granted, I'm not about to visit the likes of Saudi Arabia or Iran. In countries where it's illegal to be gay, but you're not at any danger, how can you help inspire a global shift in attitude if you're avoiding the country altogether? How can you help the citizens understand that it's important for us to have equal rights in these countries if you're not willing to engage in a communication with them? Now, it's all very well and good me saying you can visit these countries and not be in danger of being arrested or abused, and you can also support the local community and 
the local businesses. But you might be thinking, why would I have to worry about that when I can just go somewhere where it's okay for me to be gay? I could go to Sieges Pride, I could go to Palm Springs, I could go to Mykonos for a nice gay cruise. For me, one of the best parts about traveling is exposing myself to different cultures and communities and experiencing different way of life. I think the best way we can better ourselves as people and as a society is by learning about all the people in the world and their way of life. It's always really, really important, not just for gay people, but for every kind of person, to do your research on the laws and morals and the way of life of the country before you go. Whether or not you're gay or straight, public displays of affection might not be okay in that country. And in the United Arab Emirates, for example, in Dubai, Western tourists are getting arrested all the time because any kind of sexual relations outside of a heterosexual marriage is illegal there and it is punishable with jail time, fines, deportation, whatever it might be. So always, always, always be careful. I want to give a quick shout out to TravelGayAsia.com. I use that website all the time to research anything to do with LGBT stuff in every destination in Asia. They always provide me with the information I need to know if there's any gay bars or gay clubs or gay businesses that I should be supporting. It's a really, really useful tool and if you are going to Asia I would really recommend using that website. I would love to know your thoughts on the matter. Despite what I have to think, everyone has their own opinion. I want to know whether or not you would visit a country where it's illegal to be gay, such as Singapore or Malaysia. I want to have this discussion with you guys, so let me know your thoughts in the comment box down below. Throw me a like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about my channel. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.